Okay, well, I would love to call this meeting to order now. Um, uh, the first item, I guess we do have to say this is being recorded. Uh, and since we are doing this by distance, then all the votes are going to be roll call votes. So just be aware of that. Um, the first item is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from several meetings, March 11th, March 13th, March 16th, March 24th, and March 25th, just because we have been meeting like madmen. Um, so Fred and John, do you have any comments on those minutes? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, good. Um, then uh, I would hear a motion. Motion to... Uh, approve the minutes of March 11th, March 13th, March 16th, March 24th, and March 25th, 2020. Second. Okay, I'll second that. Um, all in favor, Jonathan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, great. Um, the uh, vendor and payroll warrants, I signed those and you have a copy there. Are there any uh, questions or comments about that? No. No, we're good. Okay, okay, great. Uh, third item on the list here is public comment. Do um, you have this time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda? And I see there's at least one member of the public there, uh, the Kellogg family, looks like. I assume that might be Chris or maybe other members of his family. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add in right now, Chris? No, nothing. Okay, great. Nice to have you here. Um, and I guess technically, Lynn and um, Keith, you're also members of the public. And, and Amy, if you have anything to chime in here on the public side. <laughs> Not me. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. I think um, the things that I have are already on the agenda. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. All right, then let's go on to um, item four uh, on the agenda is uh, the COVID-19 state of emergency. Uh, first item is to review Governor Baker's extension of the stay-at-home advisory and non-essential business closures through May 4th, 2020. Um, so let me turn that over to Brian. I think we basically had decided at our last meeting to keep things till April 8th. And on April 8th, we would uh, either extend or, or end our own emergency. Is that the main thing we have to do here? Yeah, that's the main thing at our, at one of our prior meetings, I don't even recall which one was which, um, <laughs> the board adopted a directive limiting work in buildings to essential activities. Um, and requiring employees to work from home. And that directive was um, until further notice, but it was gonna be reviewed by the board no later than April 8th, so which is tonight. Um, since that time, the governor has extended um, the stay at home order and the um, um, essential, uh, non-essential business closures until May 4th. Um, so the question for the board, I think is, what are we gonna do from tonight until let's say May 4th or whenever we want to review it again. Mm -hmm. um, the next, the, the meeting of the next scheduled meeting of the board would be April 29th, I believe. Um, so yeah, um, I'll, I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk from sort of the town office standpoint and if Lynn wants to add anything and then maybe Keith wants to talk about the highway, but um, we're rotating Everybody has, um, at least in the shared office space, um, everybody's coming in on a different day. Um, sometimes I'll overlap with, I've overlapped with uh, Cynthia, the assessor, on two occasions, but we're on opposite ends of the building. And I probably see her once a day um, when we're there. Um, but we seem to be doing okay. Um, and we could function like that. Um, for the you know until at least May fourth, I would think. Um, but I don't know if Lynn. Well, I don't know what. You... I I agree that we can continue to function. Um, I my normal day is Friday, so I was in on Friday. There were some 
things that I just couldn't get done on Friday. So I did go over in over the weekend. But again, no one was in the building at that time. Um, and uh, we all sanitize our way back out of the building when we leave. So we sanitize anything we would have come in contact with, with while we're there and then as we're leaving. Um, so I agree with Brian, we can continue on this way until May 4th and revisit if you'd like. Okay. Has the uh, custodian <coughs> been coming in? And I, I don't know what is his schedule weekly. Once a week or something? Has he been coming three, in to... Three days a week. Has he been coming in, Lynn? Have you seen him to sanitize or do anything in the building? He comes in at like 5 o'clock in the morning, so no, I don't see him. <laughs> yeah, but he is coming in. Yeah. He's been, he's been coming in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. We, and he's, we, he's just doing... The uh, town offices building only, not to nowhere else. Correct. <clears throat> right, right now, okay. Okay. Um, and I, I get hot. Um, Keith is. I think you have some requests, right? In terms of yes, you could bring back some. For, yeah, in my situation, I sent that memo off. Um, the yeah. issue I have is. For me to operate the way we are right now until May 4th, uh, there's something's got to give. I'm going to have to, if, if I do that, I'm going to have to not get things done this year. I can't begin to do my summer projects and not be, not be working. So um, I feel that with the, the recommendations that I had, especially one person in a vehicle, um, trying to minimize anybody being in the building at multiple times in close proximity, we can operate, especially now that we're, we're more or less focusing on outside work. Okay. So my understanding is you would, um, you would like us to, if we're going to uh, maintain our state of emergency declaration, that we amend it to uh, include your um, recommendations for how the highway department can operate uh, with sufficient social distancing, like your one person per vehicle, um, assign a vehicle to an employee for the shift and no one else operates it. You sanitize the vehicle at the end of the day, um, by, done by the employee who used the vehicle. Uh, you sanitize the office and common contact points multiple times per day. Um, and then you manage work on rainy days uh, to sort of an as needed status so that you avoid having everyone congregating in one place, um, which is not necessarily, especially the one person per vehicle is not necessarily the most efficient way <coughs> to operate, but it would uh, certainly maintain the, um, a better, more effective social distancing for you and your employees. Correct. And, it, you know, we're not in a situation where we get in a vehicle and drive a hundred miles where it's short distance driving so that it's really not, yes, it will use a little bit more fuel, but at the same point in time, if I'm able to do it, it's going to allow us to get work done. Whereas if I don't work at all, we're not getting work done. So I feel hey, it's, it's worth it. Hey Keith, how many, how many projects do you guys have on a regular basis where where the work can be done without four hands? You know, there, there is definitely some things, but again, when we start to do exterior work and, you know, if someone's, for instance, operating a, a bucket loader and someone's out in front of it, we always will have, we'll have the dis our distances are, you know, most cases 10, 15 feet apart from each other. Um, uh, there really isn't a situation where we have to be outside two feet apart doing something hand in hand type of thing. It's, it's more distance type stuff. It's for instance, we send two people to go mow lawns. They can each be on a lawnmower. They're not going to be near each other. They each take their own via a separate vehicle to do that. Those are the kinds of things that I can accomplish without having us close to each other. 
about tree trimming? Can you do that with some distance if you had two guys? I don't know what your crew Yeah, is, I mean, but... at the moment, trimming is kind of out of the question. I don't have a chipper anymore. Well, um, you'd have to stockpile it somewhere. Pile yeah, it. and I, I mean, I don't, they're really, I'm really not in any dire emergency to, to get any work like that done. We, we're in pretty good shape with trimming with what we were doing earlier this winter with lack of snow. Okay. So how, how does this, if, if we extend to May 4th, how does this apply to people getting paid what, through May 4th? Uh, I guess uh, maybe the question is to Brian, is people, whether they work full, full time or full week or not going to get paid? Through May fourth, um, that's a that's a something we need to discuss. I would I would recommend whatever we do, it's through April 29th, because that's that's our next meeting. Okay. Um, well, well, what is it? We can think about that. But, um, if we're bringing in, uh, I think at this point, the majority of people have work that they can do from home. I think the highway department is. Are really the ones that can't work from home, right? Um, so, but up till now, they've been getting paid for full weeks of, pay of yep, yes, correct, eighty hours. Okay, and the same with the police. I, I guess the the chief and the assistant. Again, they should they, be working regular shifts. But they're regular working shifts. regular shifts now, I think, right? Okay, yep. so yeah. if we extend this to to May fourth and. Does that mean Keith's crew uh, would get paid full t full time until May four uh, May fourth or whatever April 29th? So we're talking whether they work or not, they would get paid. That's I think there's two questions to answer. One is, are we going to let them back? And then the second question is, I, I guess if they end up working 32 hours, are we going to pay them for 40 hours? Right? Is, All right. Because if they work 40 hours, we're going to pay them 40 hours, but if there's, if they only work 32, are we going to pay them for 40? Mm -hmm. I, I, I assume that's your question. Well, kind of, yeah, that's getting at it too, yeah. I think with our current state of emergency declaration, my re recollection, and correct me please if, you're, if I'm wrong, Brian, was that um, people would be paid for their regular hours and do as much of that work from home as possible. And yeah. if it turns out they're I don't know, 12 hours a week, but there's only 10 hours worth of work they can do from home. They still were paid their normal rate. Is that right? But it, uh, I also get the feeling that there was plenty of work that could be done at home. So I don't really know that people were necessarily being paid for not working uh, outside the highway department. Um, but, uh, be, but we're all less efficient working in this mode. So it could be that less work is done, but the same number of hours is being put in. Um, do you have any um, idea there? Because it, it, I would like to do something that's the same for, for all departments as far as pay is concerned. You know, if through no fault of your own, you can't come to work because of social distancing and you can't get this one thing done, then uh, I don't want to dock your pay. I guess that's kind of my way of looking at it. I agree. Well, it's it's a little little different, other than I, I guess Keith's crew can't work remotely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. I they know. don't have anything they could do remotely. Whether I think everybody else probably does. Right. Right. So, but I uh, but I don't know that we're we're you know breathing down everyone's neck to make sure that oh, oh you you actually work twelve hours remotely or whatever the number of hours right. is remotely. Um, that's kind of I, I i'm kind of assuming that we're, we're mostly keeping people busy because it's a busy time of year and there's extra things that we are trying to do right so anyway i guess my proposal or motion if it comes to a motion is to extend our declared emergency uh allow the highway folks to go back to work under the conditions that uh, Keith has proposed, which will allow for social distancing and allow them to get some work done. 
um, which both of those are good for the town and it's better than what we're doing now. Um, and that it's basically in place um, until we say it's not in place and we can expect to review this again on the 29th of April, which is our next scheduled meeting. Of course, we can call emergency meetings and, um, and take a look at it earlier than that, but it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to like review it every single week if the governor's got out till May 4th. No, I, 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 I agree. And I guess I'm comfortable to either May 4th or I don't know when the end of the two week pay period it is. it come somewhere in the middle or after when? Um, the end of the pay period for this time is Thursday. So don't have a calendar with me. So it'd be two weeks from Thursday would be the okay. end of the pay period. 23rd. 23rd. Right third. Yeah, 23rd. Okay. Well, should I put that in the form of a motion? Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see, um, so I, I move that we uh, keep our declared state of emergency with the um, uh, uh, amendment that we allow uh, highway department workers to work under the conditions uh, stated in Keith's memo, which is part of the packet. So I believe that's part of the public record, but briefly only one person to a vehicle. A vehicle is assigned to an employee for the shift and no one else operates that vehicle during the shift. You sanitize the vehicle at the end of the day by the employee who used it. Sanitize the office and common contact points multiple times per day and manage the work on rainy days as needed to keep social distancing. Second. All of those in, oh, any more further discussion? Uh, not, on, not on that, I have one on the, related to the part-time police, but. Okay, uh, so let's take, a, let's take a vote on this one first then. Okay. Uh, so all in favor, Jonathan? Yep. Uh, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Okay, so uh, I guess I would like Keith at our next meeting on the 29th to tell us how things are going and uh, what you've been working on and what you see maybe for the next month, whether you can continue that way or, or what would be different. Okay. Okay. That sounds reasonable. <clears throat> okay. The, the concern I have that I don't remember reflected accurately in the minutes uh, we talked about the police part-time officers working and i think the way we left it if they were scheduled to work and i think the chief said they they schedule them the first of the month for the month if they were scheduled to work and, and had to be isolated or quarantined or whatever that they would get paid for that time that was scheduled but nothing after that. I guess I'd like to see that reflected in minutes somewhere, that that's how we're doing it. So if he has his next schedule comes out on May 1st, uh, there were the people that would be eligible to get paid if they came down with, with the virus. Otherwise, you know, I don't think we should be doing on a, on a pay period or weekly basis deciding who's eligible or not. Brian, is that what you agree? Is, do you think we agreed to? Um, that was my understanding of how we we're going to deal with it. Yeah. Right, and then, like I say, I, I may be wrong that we, it wasn't in the minutes, but I, I think just to clarify that. Okay, that's what I re remember us agreeing to as well. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me move us along here. So um, we need a. We need a. Okay. The second item under all business is to discuss the Department of Labor Standards Review of the Waitley Highway Garage. And oh. I don't know whether to turn that over to Keith or Brian. Can we, uh, can we just talk about a couple more things under the oh. under the COVID-19 stuff? Oh, oh I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, somehow my, my agenda is on a different computer here. Sorry, I went to the wrong place. Um, <laughs> should, I be, should be looking at B now, right? Consider... Um, well, A, do we, do we agree on the, the new date? Oh, well, uh, go on B really. We just discussed B really. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think the way the motion read was we're going to extend our state of emergency and review it on the 29th. So uh, essentially okay. the 29th and we'll be meeting then. Of course, we can meet earlier if we decide we need to review it earlier, but um, we will at least review it by the 29th. And the governor may know at that point that he's extending it further. And we don't know, though. We don't know what it will be like on the 29th. Right. And, and just to be clear, that like you were amending the directive limiting work in town buildings as it's right. listed on the agenda, right? Correct. That's what we had amended to. The directive limit, yes. Allowing those guys back, right? Correct. Um, so so my, my last question is, it's that's certainly not my last question, but on this topic, in terms of, in terms of pay, ha, have we resolved the situation if, there's a rainy day and the and the highway guys can't come in. Are we paying them 32 or are we paying them 40? So what are we doing for all the other employees? Doesn't matter if it rains. Well, maybe we should I, ask I Keith. Know, what are we doing for other employees? There may be other reasons besides rain. Um, what do we do for the other employees? And I, I, I think that should just be the same across the board. Well, well, no, but but what happens? What happens ordinarily when it rains? Yeah. Well, ask ask Keith. What would his guys? What are you guys doing? Well, it rains. You know, when on a rainy day, if we're in doing repairs on some equipment, things like that, the situation is we're going to have a lot closer proximity, and it's a lot tougher for us to to go about doing things in inside the building, keeping our social distance. Just like it's it's being difficult to do that at the town office if there's three people in the in the same office so that's why i made that comment about trying to limit maybe my work on rainy days um presently right now when they're working we i mean what we've been doing now is we've been pretty much only having one employee per day which means that we're paying them to basically sit at home. So I'm trying to get a way to get some of the labor back to work. Yep. Can, I think I mentioned this to you, Keith and, and Brian of hauling stone. You're going to need stone. For yeah, there's, there's some work. projects. There's some projects like that. Yes. That are rainy day projects that I can accomplish. Right. Okay. So I, I guess to answer what Brian's question, it's up to whatever Keith decides that they could do on a rainy day. Well, it says on the uh, memo, manage work on rainy days to as needed status. There may be periods of time where it may be best to have employees stay home or reduced staff during those days. There's also plenty that can be done on rainy days, but the need may arise. So Honestly, I would I would say for the time being we pay them. It, it sounds like it's going to be very limited. It doesn't sound like it's going to be a dramatic number of hours that we're talking about. And in that case, um, you know, as long as we're in control of of our budget, I I I think we're remiss not to pay them. And I I tend to agree with Jonathan. We'll be reviewing this in. One, two, three weeks. Okay. Um, and if we're, if we're that strapped for money, then we can revisit that. But it doesn't sound like, it sounds like Keith is trying to make this as efficient as possible, which I yes. really appreciate. Okay. So do so we need okay. to make a vote on that? And make a motion? Uh, are you, are you going to continue what what we're currently doing i think that's what uh, jonathan and i were certainly supporting fred yeah that's that's fine i, I think it's covered under what we agreed to to pay them through the 29th i don't okay think so i guess we don't need if we're continuing specific for a key yeah then we don't need a new vote all right, right. as long as yeah as long as we're all clear that that's we're going to extend how we're our arrangement yeah from April 8th now till April 29th. Right. Yes. I, I do have to tell you the one highway department person I happened to see 
when I was out running an errand, it was asking me, please put me back to work. I'm so bored. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I told him I will take that under consideration. Um, so I hope he's happy that he might get to go back to work on some particular days. I mean, we, we have great employees. That's all I can say. So, all right. So can we go on to the next one? And now I believe I'm in the right place on the agenda. Um, to discuss chapter 53 of the Acts of 2020, uh, quote, the act to address challenges faced by municipalities and state authorities resulting from COVID-19. Um, and particularly as it pertains to our annual town meeting and some payment deadline extensions for the fiscal year 2021 budget. So that definitely goes to Brian. Yep. So this past week, uh, the legislature adopted and the governor signed the act that Joyce had just talked about. Um, and I, I included in your meeting material um, updates from KP Law mm -hmm. as to um, what that legislation contained. And we'll just, I'll, I'll summarize it quickly. The first sections talk about town meeting and not to go into too much detail. Prior to this being adopted, town me annual town meetings needed to be held prior to June 30th. The, um, the legislation allows towns to now hold it past June 30th, um, so long as the state of emergency is still in effect. Um, and let's just, let's leave it at that high level for now in, in terms of our discussion, but w w the difficulties that that creates are addressed in, in subsequent sections of the legislation because that means we're starting um, fiscal year 21 without a budget, without an approved budget. Um, so the next sections of the act talk about um, what municipalities would do. And it authorizes um, the adoption of what's called a 112th budget. So fiscal year is 12 months. So you would essentially, the, um, I believe it's the select board um, would authorize it, it would would make a request to um, the director of accounts at DLS that the town be authorized to um, adopt a 112 budget for in this case it would be July and then you could do that for subsequent months. Um, there's also language in here that allows um, municipalities to continue to use their free cash. Usually there's a period where free cash just disappears for a couple months from the close of the fiscal year till when it's certified. Um, they're allowing towns to continue to use that. So there won't be a recertification period right away. We can continue to use it. It also authorizes us to keep spending um, enterprise fund and special revenue funds. Um, those are all, those are funds that are also reauthorized every year. Um, so that's, uh, <laughs> really stuff for us to consider as we um, as we think about how we want to manage the next couple months. Um, we postponed annual town meeting. Um, hopefully that's that's known that that's postponed, but we haven't set a date yet. Um, and at some point we're going to have to figure out how we want to proceed if we want to go beyond June 30th or we want to hold it prior to. Um, and it, it's hard to tell if for, with a lot of these things, it's hard to tell what the next month, how the next month is going to shake out in terms of how this whole pandemic is going to go. Um, so yeah. uh, it would be less complicated if we could find a way to hold the annual town meeting prior to June 30th. But if we can't, then there's mechanisms for us to operate. It would be more complicated. Um, so it's a decision we'll have to make at some point. We've, we've had preliminary discussions. Is it possible to hold it outside? Um, is that even something that's uh, worthwhile? Um, mm -hmm. but I, I, it's hard to say with, with, with this current situation. Yeah. Do you happen to know if, um, seating at six feet apart how many people can fit in the gymnasium 
at the elementary school? <coughs> or is that a number we could find out? I think we could do some rough calculations. So. But aren't you under a 10, 10 limit? 10 limit, yeah. No, that doesn't apply to municipal legislative bodies. Okay. So. Okay. What What is, if we still plan on doing it in, say, the, the last day in June, when is the absolute last day? Do we need to decide on that? Is that like June 1st or June, what, two weeks before that? When do we have? In terms of the warrant, the annual town meeting warrant needs to be posted seven days prior to the meeting. But in terms of uh, budget planning and, and things like that, I mean, whether we're adopting a budget at the annual town meeting or we're going to adopt a 112 budget, we're still going to have to find some way, whether it's remote or, well, we'll most likely be remote, um, with the finance committee to, to, to start reviewing the budgets, maybe beginning of May. Um, but we're going to have to, we're going we're gonna to have to have, we're going to have to start having those meetings. Yeah. Uh, within the next well, but we also need to have some hint of, of where the budget's going from the state as well. And, and that hasn't happened. It was supposed to happen. Um, um, yesterday, they were supposed to have the house ways and means uh, chairperson was going to have a round table and they canceled it because of technical difficulties <coughs> rescheduled for next week. I haven't seen the time yet, but, but yeah, we need to know what, what state aid is going to look like. Well, we, we've passed budgets in the past when we didn't know what state aid was going to be, whether well, it's often the case that the state is way at the end of June and we generally do have our town meeting in April. So um, we probably can't have the mindset of let's, we have to wait till the state comes out with their budget first um, or else we'll never pass a budget. Right. So we never really we know. Do no, our but I guess choice, my point is, is that while we haven't known, we've had some sense of the state's budget picture. Um, we have no idea what the state's budget picture is going to be. And, and it could be dramatic um, funding shortfalls. So yeah. it really is, it's a much bigger throw in the uh, dart throw, a, a dart throw than ever before, I think. They can give us their, they can hopefully give us their best projections in the next month and we can work with those. Understanding that there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I know tonight we probably won't come to a decision on when the town meeting will be, but I think we should start getting all the other ducks in a row as best we can and have the finance committee's meetings resume. And isn't that nice? Resume on Zoom, right? Uh, okay. All right. Sorry. I know I'm not the best at, at making puns. Um, I think I think we have to just have everything ready so we could have town meeting in June before June 30th. Um, and yeah, we don't necessarily have a good idea of when in June, but as Fred, I think was pointing out, the last day of June is a Tuesday. We tend to have our town meeting on a Tuesday. I don't know that there's anything in the law that requires it to be a Tuesday, but boy, wouldn't it be nice to have something be the same as it's been in the past. So if we're thinking of Tuesdays in June, there's the 30th, the 23rd, uh, and the 16th and the 2nd. I say not the 9th because that's our election day. And I don't know if that's also uh, up for discussion on here, but it, I, it, it seems like there are ways to hold the election with primarily voting by mail and really uh, just getting the word out to people that, hey, for this election, you need to get an absentee ballot, do everything by mail as much as possible so that we can keep the social distancing needed so there's no lines at the polls. Um, so in, in a way, those, it just basically, I would really like to keep our elections going, have something be normal. 
Um, and that sort of means if we stick with Tuesdays, June 2nd, 16th, 23rd, 30th. Um, if we really went to the very end and said June 30th, if the budget didn't pass, wouldn't we then need time to be able to do a 112th budget? So it seems like waiting till June 30th isn't probably the best idea. Um, nope. Then maybe if we're sticking with Tuesdays, then the 23rd <clears throat> might be the latest date we would consider. Um, as far as I know, though, we basically have been not having finance committee meetings for what, three or four weeks now? So they would be three or four weeks behind their usual schedule. Yeah. Um, so if everything really just kind of turned back on and resumed, they might actually be ready for June 2nd because that's five weeks from our original. Um, that might be a little too close for comfort. <laughs> um, but I still think if, if we get started now, we can be ready for a town meeting in June as far as having our budget put together, having whatever uh, bylaw uh, changes and amendments and the really important things that we normally do at an annual town meeting. I, I, I really think we should work as if it's gonna be in June. It might be that it can't be in June and we have to make it be later. But I, I hope we could at least pick, a maybe target date is not the right word, but could we be ready by June? second maybe the answer to that is is no um could we be ready by june 16th um and maybe that's something we won't really know for sure until our next meeting um see what progress we get in the next three weeks on the budget and such but i probably talked too much already i should let somebody else talk i think we've got time yet to decide on that and assuming Brian talks with finance to, I guess, to get some input from him and what they think would be reasonable and how much time finance thinks they would need or how many meetings they think they would need. Yep. I'll have that discussion um, with finance after, after this meeting. Um, but I, I agree. We don't want to go to June 30th in case some, who knows what, might happen where something happens if we need to continue yeah. it. The, um, something where we need more time or something, yeah. Though I gotta admit you guys, you know, sitting here tonight, I'm hard pressed to believe that I can in good conscience think we're gonna have a comfort zone and a safety zone to have town meeting in the middle of June. I just, I honestly don't see, I honestly don't see it happening. I, I just, it's, it's, it, it's, I, I, I think back to watching these long lines of, of voting last night in Wisconsin and it's a smaller scale, but we can't put people at risk just because we want to get a town meeting going. Well, I, I don't think we're suggesting that. No, I understand that. I understand that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just cautioning us to, to plan a number of different avenues as opposed to thinking we're going to do something and get caught with our pants down. Yeah. We, we can still have the, the option of the one twelfth budget on discussed at a, at a June meeting. Uh, if for some reason we don't get enough people to vote on it, on it at a June meeting, we can still, I, I guess adapt to one twelve budget, right? right? Yeah, and, and go from there. I, I don't know if the participation is it going to make a difference in either either option. I guess. Yeah. Do we? We don't have a quorum for town meeting, do we, Lynn? No, we no quorum requirement. No. Yeah. But can the select board approve a one twelve budget in end of June if we want? Yes. Okay. I, I, I would, I, I think we would do it, or I would recommend that the board would do it in consultation with the finance committee. Yeah. Um, sure. But either way, whether, whether we hold a town meeting in June or not, we're going to need to have a final budget. Well, final budget for, for FY21, whether the board's asking for one twelfth of it 
well, it's at least one twelfth of it. We have some payments that we make up front. Um, retirement's one of them. Insurance, we, you know, some of these we we make payments up front, and there's a discount. Um, so we'll have to include that. It's at least one twelfth that we would be looking for in July. Um, okay. But either way, we're gonna we're gonna have to have that in place. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay, it sounds like we don't have enough information, of course, to make any realistic decision for June, but in anticipation that we will eventually have to have a town meeting, we should start, restart, I should say, the finance committee meetings and any other meetings that are needed for getting things uh, lined up so that when it comes the time we can vote on a budget as a town, then we can, we're actually ready um, and don't need to have a lot of uh, unnecessary delay. Does that seem, that's some kind of my sense of the room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could just cover a couple other items on here uh, of the legislation, because um, it makes, uh, it, it provides some flexibility for towns um, in terms of um, property tax deadlines. I don't know if, if Lynn, you, you had a couple of requests that or recommendations that the board might want to consider? Yeah, one of the things that is up to the selectman or the chief executive officer to uh, decide is on whether we want to place an extension on the due date for real estate and personal property tax that would allow people to pay by rather than by May 1st, by June 1st, um, without any penalties or interest added on. Um, given the environment and people being out of work and people, it, it may make sense for us to do that and give them that opportunity to have a little extra time to pay. Um, that's one of the options. Um, another uh, suggestion or another option the select board can vote on is any bill, any excise, water, sewer, that kind of bill that was due any time from March 10th on could also um, have its interest waived, interest and penalties waived up until June 30th. So these are some, these are two items that the select board would have to vote on. Um, and probably the sooner the better on these two, um, mainly because I'd have to get word out to people and I do have some excise tax bills that are ready to go out, not a huge bunch, but I would like to put some kind of insert in those explaining mm -hmm. that the due date is now, you know, June 30th or whatever for an excise tax bill. Um, from a financial standpoint, as far as um, making sure that we have enough money to keep us going, I think we'll be okay with that. Um, it, it just won't be in as soon as it normally is, uh, but it should arrive in this fiscal year, uh, especially real estate and personal property, given that it's uh, a June 1st deadline. My guess is there are going to be a more probably delinquent taxpayers this time around just because of the financial impact of COVID-19. But um, so those are the two options. Um, that we, I would need some direction from the select board on. Yeah, thank you. It, um, something in your memo that I picked up on, um, you would send need to send a notice to all taxpayers if we change the date. So that would I, still be true. Well, no, actually, I just got word from um, DOR that that is not a requirement. We oh, do okay. not have to. We have to post it in various places and do a robocall and that kind of and put it on the website but we do not have to do a mailing to everyone thank goodness okay. thank that would have been, okay. <laughs> that would have okay. been a struggle so and um it seems like the effect is the same whether you um change the deadline to june 1st or just waive the interest and penalties to june 1st um, yeah I, that was, was a little strange on how they worded that in the I don't know if Brian has more input on that, but. Yeah, like I don't understand the difference effectively in that other than somebody might feel like they've 
they're better off with a due date being different and rather than being late but having no penalty. I, I can't really see any difference yeah. between those two. Well, it was I, not I terribly saw, clear. <laughs> I, I saw another, I guess you could call it a version of that. In today's paper, there's one community that extended it till June 1st and they would impose late fees on July 1, if it was paid July 1 and after, that would that would apply to interest from June 1st on. So you had the incentive to do it in month of June. If you wait right. July 10th, you're paying interest plus a late fee. Right. Yeah. So is, is there any real difference between the two things that Lynn had proposed in that memo? I mean, I guess I, if Brian or anybody has any, I, I would just say it's, it's simpler to me to say the deadline is extended. That's fewer words. It's an easy concept. But then I, to say, well, it's really due when it's due, and, but we won't charge you any late fee till June 1st, that's a lot more words and sentences. Yeah. It seems more complicated. And going I think it is. I, I think you're right, Joyce. I think it is clearer to say we're extending the deadline to June 1st. Um, yeah. I think people would be less confused by that. Um, and uh, on number three, um, the waiving of interest and penalties on excise tax and water to uh, not later than June 30th. Um, that's something we have to pass or I thought that was it's actually- It's an option. It's, oh, it's part of the options in that the select board needs oh, okay. to, to vote on that. So we have um, options, so why, why they set two different dates, I'm not, I wasn't quite clear on why one's June 1st and the other's June 30th, but it would have been much easier if they just said, okay, let's make them all June 1st, but they yeah. didn't do that. Okay. So they are two separate options, um, yeah. the date change and the waiving of interest for excise and those taxes. Okay. All right. Well, John, you've been kind of quiet. Do you have anything to say there? No, I'm fine. I'm just taking it all in. But okay. thank you, Joyce. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'd, uh, I'd entertain a motion on this. Um, I, I, would, I would make a motion, if I'm understanding correctly, that we uh, extend uh, the deadline for uh, property taxes to June 1st without penalty. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second for that? Second. Okay. Um, no further discussion? All those in favor? Jonathan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the uh, waiving the interest and penalties on excise tax through June 30th. Do I have a motion on that? Yeah, I'll make a motion on that. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor uh, to uh, adopt the waiving the interest and penalties on excise and water tax, uh, excise tax and water to uh, June 30th. Um, Jonathan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce, yep. Okay, okay, very good. That was a very clear memo, by the way, Lynn. It was very easy to, to, to figure out what's the right thing to do. It was hard making anything clear on that, the way they voted that, so. <laughs> okay, so Brian, are we ready to go to item D under COVID-19? to review fiscal year budget modification letters from the Deerfield and Sunderland Select Boards as they relate to Frontier Regional School District's fiscal year 2021 budget. Can I just mention two quick things? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the legislation that we were talking about also author um, authorizes the takeout delivery of beer and wine in any establishment licensed to sell alcoholic beverages or only wines and malt beverages on premise. Oh, okay. So what this does is if you have an on-premise alcohol license, so we have, um, we have the diner, the diner in. The um, they are now now allowed to sell 
wine in its original sealed container and malt beverage shall be sold in a sealed container. Those, that language makes me a little nervous because it's different. Um, Big growlers or something, you can bring bottles to fill up from a tap. Um, and yeah. it, so it, it's allowing these establishments to, to sell um, essentially wine or beer, um, sell it for takeout or delivery. Um, and it needs to be sold as part of the same transaction as a purchase of food. Um, oh, okay. And then there's, there's amounts, but um, I, I'm told that the Waitley Inn is not open currently, um, but I don't know if that's true or not. Um, and I don't know what the diner's plans are, so I'm thinking we should probably reach out to them and see if they have any plans to do this. But it's okay. allowed now um, um, during the duration of the declared state of emergency. Well, I thought for the the diner we had was it a two drink limit when they were drinking in the diner. So mm -hmm. would you have some kind of limit what they could take out as well? Uh, the legislation says a customer shall be limited to 192 ounces of malt beverage and. One and a half liters of wine. That's kind of a lot. L limited, limited though. I mean, to that, you could do less. <laughs> I don't know what the legislation. This is what the legislation says. There's, there's a lot of details that are missed when, when something like this is passed. I, I think it's probably worthwhile having a discussion with. Yeah. Our, we met the manager a couple weeks ago, so you know what they're yeah. doing. It's not a great thing to give these things to people who are getting in trucks and driving away, but right. they could go to the Circle K anyways and get it. But um, it, I, it's still worth a conversation in my mind. Okay. Um, there's uh, no indication on there. It said... Uh, yeah, I'm not finding anything um, like a Waitley Diner original website or anything with any information either. So I think the best way is to yeah. contact like you're saying. Wait, I assume the diner is open 24-7? I, I was trying to find that out and it's I, not. I think it is. I've seen people in there. Yeah. Um, I do not believe the in is though. I thought all restaurants were closed to eating, dining in, it has to be takeout. Yeah. Right, but I don't think I don't think the inn is even doing takeout. Right, right. I think so the diner, diner is doing takeout, but they're also allowing truck drivers in for showers. Yep. Yeah, I was wondering about that, Jim, um, because I had seen people in there and I actually saw people sitting at tables and I was, I was wondering, and, and I guess maybe that's because they were waiting for the shower. I, I, I think we need to be um, cautious about, about that. It's a pretty popular place for showers. And we, we, I mean, when I drove by a couple times, I thought they, that they were open, open. Yeah, that's, that's probably the majority of their, their on-site traffic is, is gonna be for showers. I know people have been waiting to take showers, so that's why, hence the people sitting and waiting. I don't think we should be allowing that. I, I, I think yeah. if you're gonna wait, you need to wait outside. Yeah. Yeah. But would this got come under the Board of Health? Would they be, would be something to alert the Board of Health and have them uh, send our health agent over? I've been actually going um, to their Zoom meetings. They're very active. They've been meeting once a week and, um, uh, I think if we you know, send them a send them a note, they will jump on it and uh, uh, and look I, into it. I I totally agree. <clears throat> I've given Fran a list of probably eight different businesses, which um, I in my travels that that we've seen uh, people on site there where the business isn't open, but they're still working. Uh, they still have employees working there. So I gave Fran a list of those businesses so they could follow up. So the board of health can follow up and check to make yeah. sure that one, they're essential. And if they're not, that you know, they shouldn't have people on site there. 
So yeah. he was going to look into that as of two days ago. Right. Yes. And at their meeting yesterday, he mentioned that, uh, that he had a list that they were working from. He didn't yeah. say who it was on the list because it was a public meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, does, right. does this also apply to the campground? Campground is closed by the Board of Health. They, because they're right. not, they, they can't do social distancing if your whole idea is to oh, come together. Okay, well, I didn't know the status of what it was or when they expect if they're going to open up or what. I don't know. I, I think they're still closed with outstanding issues from the prior year. I don't know that those have been resolved. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last piece of the legislation is if it allows kind of a blanket extension for land use permitting deadlines. So um, it essentially tolls any deadline. Um, it's either 45 days or 30 days past the end of the state of emergency. Um, so they're not forced to meet and make decisions, but land use boards can meet. Um, and they can meet remotely and hold public hearings and do all that kind of stuff that they normally do. Um, related to that, and it would, it would come to this board in, in, in a different context, but um, so one of the local businesses in town, Quant Quant Farm, who does a lot of weddings is being negatively impacted by um, the COVID-19 um, restrictions. So I know that they're going to be submitting a request to the ZBA to extend, I think, I believe it's temporarily, at least for this year, extend their allowable time to operate. They usually close October 31st. Uh, I think their request to the ZBA will be that they um, be allowed to operate through, I don't know what the end date is, but at least through November, so they can reschedule some of their events. Um, the action this board would need to take is that we would need to amend their seasonal alcohol license to be concurrent with whatever whatever is granted. Um, so just we'll have to stay tuned for that. But the the other part of their request, Brian, is to to have events during the weekday because right now it's only limited to Friday and Saturdays, I think, and so they wanted to have events during the weekday. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was all to, to make up for their loss of business earlier in the year. So it was two parts, extending the end day and allowing weekday events. Okay. It's good to know. The action the action this board would need to take would be to amend the alcohol seasonal alcohol license to whatever end date they want because okay. that would apply. Um, it, my understanding is that that they would quote unquote would appreciate action sooner rather than later um, from the ZBA. I don't know what what's been decided or not, but I think the sooner they know that they can operate, then the sooner they could um, alter dates and <clears throat> contracts with clients. Um, so I just hope that the ZBA is considering that. Okay, so from this board's point of view, we have to wait till the ZBA takes whatever action they may take. Um, but then we can expect once the ZBA does take action on whichever time scale, and hopefully it's sooner rather than later, um, but um, then it'll come to us that we'll have to um, take some action as well. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I haven't received an application yet for the amendment of their special permit. Okay. The, the next ZBA meeting is, is in May, so uh, unless they hold a special meeting, which they rarely do. So it would be May, what, 7th? would be their next regular meeting, so. Okay, well, I hope they're watching so they know they've got a deadline to, yeah. to make with the ZBA. Okay. Okay, so can we move on to Frontier Budget? Yep. Um, I think we got in our packets um, letters from uh, the town of Deerfield to the chair of the uh, Frontier Regional School Committee um, and uh, from Deerfield and Sunderland and they're asking for, I'm looking for the percentage um, uh, that they're actually, there's many percents in the letter here. 
they would like the current year's, right? Current year's budget they want or next year's budget to be cut 5%. That's what I couldn't tell. The following years. The following years. So the, the money that we gave them now, they're not asking you to give it back. They're saying the following year's budget, which you presumably is at some point submitted. Uh, I know they had a presentation before the wait lease finance committee. They're ask, those towns are asking for 5% lower than what they asked for originally. Okay, good. I wanted to make, because when they start putting budget years on, I can get confused really easily. So, okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to pass these along. Um, I have a call scheduled with Darius and the other town administrators for Monday. Um, I think for all of us to sort of hear what each other is thinking. Um, my initial reaction is that it's hard to know what to do. I was hoping to get more information yesterday when we had the information from the state and try to get a sense of what they're predicting would be um, any the, sort of the, the, the financial impact of this. Um, but I, I, I just not sure how we would come up with percentages, 5% or, or, or $30,000 at this point. Um, yeah, really hard to know. Um, and it, I, what I passed along was, was the frontier budgets, but they also made Deerfield also made requests in relation to Deerfield elementary in Sunderland also had requests in terms of the, the elementary school in Sunderland as well. Um, so I, I wanted to pass these along and, and just let you know that those discussions are, are, are happening. And I, and I guess to try to get a sense of preliminarily what the board's thoughts are. Oh. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll lead off, I guess, and say that I'm, I've never, I'm never a fan of just asking for across the board cuts. Um, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's the most effective budget planning process. Um, I know that any of our families, if we suddenly lose income, my guess is we don't cut our budget to go out to the movies or to dinner as much as we cut um, or, or, or to the, at the same percentage as we cut some other, uh, other bill that we have to pay. Yeah. Um, I, I think if, and, and I'm not, you know, however towns want to do it, that's not our business, but if we're going to do it, I hope that the finance committee would take a look at each individual budget and, 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 and people have to live with some people are going to get cut more than others potentially, because it just doesn't make any sense to say 5% across the board done in my opinion. I think this is probably you know, kind of procedurally, it's going to go back. The finance committee is going to start resuming their meetings and I think this will come up at their meetings as well. Um, I'd like to be as supportive as I can of the schools. Um, and I don't know, but I know that's, that's weighed against, you know, what can communities pay and with so much unemployment, uh, there's going to be some really tough decisions coming up, but I don't have, uh, like Brian, you indicated there might be some more information coming from somewhere. Um, I think if we can get a little more information, I think I don't know that I can make an informed um, or even give a formed opinion right now. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready to go on to old business? Okay, hearing no. Uh, objections under all business uh, a to discuss and vote to award the contract for the Williamsburg Road Bridge replacement project and it's been so long since I've seen like words like that together in one sentence I'm like Psh, it's confetti Psh, there we go we're actually maybe gonna get those bridges fixed after how many years I just I'm elated um, Maybe there's some discussion that should happen first. I know there was uh, uh, information specific to the various bids and the uh, contract was in our uh, 
in our packet. So, yeah. Is there anything you want to highlight on that, Brian? Um, so I also, so I sent out sort of the, the two financing scenarios. Um, we have the agreement in the packet. I sent the finance financing scenarios out today. That's a, yeah, the, the agreement is pretty much standard. Um, I have good news that I found out this afternoon. <gasps> um, scenario two is a go. We're going to get the additional $272,000. Okay. Knock me over with a feather. Okay. Yes. I got that email today. Um, well, it came with a check, right? It Shock. came with a contract Good amendment. Here. Um, we'll sign it as quick as we can before they pull it back. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I was pretty excited. I got that this afternoon. Um, Yay. That saves all of our Chapter 90 money. Um, oh, good. Good. We can put those boys to work then. So we still have to sign this contract, though, you're proposing. There's a contract amendment that I have um, for Joyce to sign. Which is just for Davenport construction for the, what, 568 and change? Um, we're going to see, we're going to sign two documents. One is the contract with Davenport yeah. for the 567, 337. But we're also signing a contract amendment with the state for them to give us the additional two hundred seventy-two thousand dollars okay. for the project. Okay. So our, our total the total amount the state is giving us is the is the seven sixty-eight. It, it's about the seven hundred sixty-nine thousand is coming from the state. <clears throat> oh, I think. I'm having a beer after this meeting. Okay. I will toast you all at that. Um, excellent. Well, then I I don't see any point in waiting. Did I hear a motion to vote to award the contract? Make a motion to award the contract. Second. Okay, all those in favor? John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay, great. And we don't have to vote on accepting money, or do we have to vote on accepting the money from the state? Um, I think, uh, Joyce, I think you could just sign the, okay. sign the contract amendment. All righty. So, right. I feel I have the full support of the board behind me in signing that. Yes. Now, okay. is, is there a restriction on starting projects like this? Construction projects in general, isn't? Didn't something come out? Um. I, I would have to look again. The, in the past, it, it was not. It, it was. Um, it was allowed to continue. Um, my understanding is we're probably not going to see much on the ground work until June or July. Is that right, Keith? Yeah, they were. By the time they can order the necessary parts from the bridge manufacturer, it was going to take till at least probably July. Um, so I believe they could still probably proceed. However, I do know Mass DOT has made some comment about suspending some projects. Now, whether that's some, some of their own or something, I'm not sure exactly. Well, but would that apply to, well, it may apply to other projects you have, you could start this summer as well, Keith, right? Well, uh, you know, I don't think that what Mass DOT has put up if they've stopped any of their own projects i don't think that has any impact on me yeah. my contracts that i have like with our <clears throat> county bids our paving are that are ending june 30th are things that i still have to get done before june 30th okay but you got the sidewalk and you got the uh, water well the the only thing that at the moment unless brian has more information i don't know where we stand with the complete streets getting that extended beyond June 30th. But as far as my paving goes that I would need to do for Williamsburg Road, I mean for Poplar Hill Road and for Chestnut Plain, that has to be done before June 30th. I, I've requested the contract extension on that probably four or five times and because I lean left the complete streets program, I 
can't get an answer. Okay, so we keep trying for that, but let's um, plan and see what we can do. It, so um, I'm, what sort of what I'm hearing from Fred is some concern that some projects might uh, have to be put off. And uh, I trust that you would alert us about any projects that under your control, Keith, that you, we would have to put off. Um, and you may not have a complete list right now. It might be that you assess things as you go along. The one thing that I do want to just uh, add to the Williamsburg Road contract is with the, um, even with the additional 273, um, Brian and I, went, we'll, we'll look at the numbers again, but I still believe that we will have to do alternate one or ourselves, or we will have to pay the 80, if we accepted that, we would have to pay the $84,000 at our chapter 90, which it's not worth it. It's, I can do it for about $14,000. Understood. But we, we can add that option later on. Oh. Nope. We did it with the town hall though. We added the, the parking lot as an option later on. Isn't this the same? Yeah, but it took us 10 years to get to this point where we actually have the money to do this. I know, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking of adding the options. We had an option for the, the town hall project. Well, two options really. And we, we didn't decide on the paving one when we awarded the contract. We decided later on, and we've got money at town meeting to award that alternate for the, for the parking lot. But why would we want to pay $84,000 versus spending only $14,000 to do it ourselves? Well, I guess that's, that's one point, but I'm saying if, if something happens that you don't have the, the equipment or, or the, or I don't know, time to do it. And we, could we go still with that alternate at a later date? For the town hall, the, the contractor was willing to, I think, carry it informally. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, okay. Does that question need to be settled uh, for this particular meeting? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You can talk so later. Let's talk. move on because it's getting uh, it's getting later. Um, the second item under old business to discuss the late Department of Labor standards review of the Waitley Highway Garage. So I don't know. Does that go to Brian or Keith? I can I can talk about it quickly. Um, so we had a we had a informal review of the of the highway garage from Department of Labor standards, and I. I thought they did very well. Um, I was I was really impressed. Um, there were even some comments about from the inspector that he never sees this done right, and it was done right. So um, there's a lot of minor, you know, minor things that need to be done. Um, and really, the biggest nut to crack, I think, is, um, and it's a good thing John's here too. Um, both the highway garage and the fire station have informal mezzanines um, above their offices um, and the OSHA requirements are such that those need to be load tested and posted if that's even if you can even get an engineer to to say what the load rating is for that or we'll have to find other solutions um, for those spaces whether they're whether we don't allow them to be used as storage or We'll have to figure that out, but um, I was really pleased with how the how the highway department did for sure. Oh, congratulations, Keith! You sounds like you're on a good ship. Well, you know, again, as Brian said, there's the the mezzanine is my biggest the biggest issue we have. Um, it's certainly an area we use for out of season storage for things like trimmers in the winter and and, and things of that nature. So. Um, if I can't use it, well, we'll have to try to just make do. But in the meantime, it's certainly it's a violation because we have no way of getting up to it without using a, a ladder. And then when you do get up there, we have no safety measures in to, to protect people from falling. So 
Um, so yeah, that's that's our biggest thing. All the other minor things can easily be addressed and will be taken care of by the deadline that they've set. Okay. Yes, I would offer if you need somebody to determine a load rating to look at uh, while you're dealing with Sarah Campbell or even Thayer Associates is familiar with the building as well. Both the highway and even the fire station, I guess. Their associates has been been doing stuff pro bono for us, so that's an that's an option. Yes, and I'm not sure it's going to take a full blown study to do that. A couple hours, maybe other time, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, are we ready to move to the next item? Uh, we got uh, to discuss the equipment, wood chipper, and excavator needs of the highway department. Well, as as you're all aware, the um, the wood chipper basically self destructed. We have not been able to determine what caused it to fail, other than it was a catastrophic failure um, to the point where the you know, at one point in time, I was hopeful that the insurance company would give us some money. And so they even sent an adjuster out. The adjuster came and looked at it and declared it to be a total loss. Um, at this point in time, um, the estimates I have for replacement are in the 50, right around the $50,000 range. Whereas when we bought that machine 21 years ago, it was 20 something thousand dollars. Um, we're at the point where I have things scheduled. If unless the schedule changes, the solid waste committee post with their on their schedule to have chipping days available to the residents in in May and in June. Um, I may need to cancel those. I don't know. You know, at this point in time, obviously, with the fact that we are in this situation with COVID-19 that the finance committee hasn't even had a chance to probably discuss it. Um, I don't know what the board wants me to, how they want me to pursue this or proceed. Uh, how much use do you get out of it, uh, Keith? I mean, is it one week a year or is it? Oh, no, you know, we, we definitely put more than 40 hours per year on it, that's for sure. Um, on the average, I would say we probably would put on it um, probably 100 to 160 hours a year actual chipping. Doesn't mean that there's times where it's on site and not being used the full time it's there. Okay, and, and what if you rented one? Any idea of the cost? I, I have not. Other than what I can refer you or refer back to is at the time before we owned a chipper after the town was forced to close the stump dump. And when I was renting a chipper, I was spending more to rent a chipper per year than I was to pay for the a municipal lease. And that's how we purchased the chipper we had because I was our, we were already spending more money per year in rental than we were if we just bought it outright. And so it was like a no brainer at that time. And I, I certainly can get information and report back in regards to what rental would be. Well, finance is probably going to ask you that. And yeah. That's, that's fine. That's something I can do. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's probably your next step, you know, write up some options for the finance committee to take a look at and they'll, I'm sure, ask you lots of questions and... Yeah, I that's fine. Um, it sounds like it's a capital item though, right? Yeah, and again, it's it's something that's not, it's not like I'm asking for a new thing or a scheduled, scheduled replacement. It's just something that, you know, it was totaled. It was... You know, we all of a sudden, it's it's sort of like if you're driving your car down the road and and you have an accident, and it's totaled. You you need to replace it. It's yep. You know, it's a little different than a normal scheduled replacement in this case. 
Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much. You know, as, as far as the moving on to the excavator goes, um, again, you know, we were sort of looking at having summer projects taking off and me needing to have an excavator to, to do the work for the, the complete streets for, you know, especially around the, for the paving to take place to get the, um, the municipal water, you know, connection done to do the, the work that I need to do on Poplar Hill Road. All these things were, are things that I need an excavator to do. Them, um, my discussion with the salesman was that we can, we can rent a machine and any money that we would spend on rent would, if we do pursue purchasing it, will go towards the towards that purchase price, so it won't be money lost. However, if we if the town decides that it, they don't want to purchase the machine, then the rental is you know we just have we paid money for rental. Okay, Keith, I, I know year, years ago, and, and the town did buy some equipment at auction at at. Uh, from, I don't know, federal agencies or the military or, or whatever. Is that still available, equipment like that? Or? Uh, it's, it, it's fairly dried up there. You can get some small things. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult, more or less. Sometimes the, you know, the fire, fire services can, can get stuff easier than, than the highway departments um, through the through their connections to the fire department, but um, to to get anything where what we're looking for, you're not gonna. It's it's not gonna be feasible. Okay. You know, and the other thing is, you know, I keep being asked. Another thing, as you all know, I was asked to look into the the work at at the dot. Dachi property on Chestnut Plain Road, and and that's definitely going to be um, well. It's something that we can do, and I'll have to look at the timing and everything when they want it to be done. But it's certainly going to be um, another situation where an excavator is going to be a definite requirement to do that work. If I recall correctly, this um, the matter of the excavator was at least uh, presented to the finance committee at this point, um, and uh, that was uh, as a part of your budget, or was that a part of the the capital budget? Well, it, you know, it was a it was a review by the by the finance committee and the capital planning. I. Okay. And the the outcome was they wanted the last the way we had left it is they wanted some more information on on some expenditure stuff and some numbers that that I prepared and Brian has and then that's when right okay we never got to have that meeting so I'm okay. sort of in limbo and I just want to in my own mind for me to to proceed and get my projects done that I need to get done in May and June I'm looking at yeah. probably needing to rent that piece of equipment come May. And the one thing I just wanted to let everybody know is that if we do spend money on rent, if we do proceed with the purchase, it will actually be money applied towards it. It won't be lost money. Okay. So if you were to buy either one, either one of these, when's the, when's the soonest could you, could you get it, say, delivered? What are, we, what are you looking at, weeks or months or? Yeah, it, it would the the machine that we used last year to do the water line across Chestnut Plain Road. I could have that. I can have it May first. Okay, how about the chipper? If you were to buy one, when I would... I have not gone as far as to see when that what I haven't gotten that far because I was trying to get more more guidelines. I don't want to, okay. you know, start going. Mm -hmm. I'd be um, the route that I need to pursue. Okay. All right. 
so um, I think at this point it's really um, going to the finance committee, uh, which we meet together with them as well. Okay, are we ready to go to the next item then? To uh, review and sign a slope easement for the Waitley Town Hall. My understanding is this is long overdue huh? and uh, we, we need to sign that and get that officially tucked away. Yeah, so, so when we constructed the rear parking lot of the town hall, um, we needed to extend the slope um, that goes down towards the, down towards the hill um, onto Melissa Caldwell's property, and she allowed us to do that. Um, and we were going to finalize um, an easement that she was going to give to the town um, to allow us to maintain that slope and have a legal right to have her or future owners not come in and, you know, undermine, dig out the slope and undermine the parking lot. Um, so the easement that's included in the packet was drafted by town council. Um, it's acceptable to Melissa and it would be the board accepting um, the terms of the easement. Now the now, Melissa will provide the easement without cost to the town. She asked that um, in exchange that the town maintain the, the fence that's perpendicular to the Smike's house, their porch. If you can think back to how the parking lot looks, that blocks um, the headlights of cars that park there from shining into her um, windows. And also to um, maintain, there's some mulch and some um, plantings on that slope as well. Um, the town would be agreeing to maintain those um, in consideration for her giving us the easement. I guess I, I have two comments on, on the, the <laughs> document. Since it's gonna be a legal document and attached to the deed, I think we need to be really clear of what the stipulations are in there. Uh, yeah. One thing that the fence, yeah, we agreed to put a fence there and it talks about maintaining a fence. It's not clear the location of the fence other than the rear parking lot. To me, rear parking lot is, is a big area. It, I think it should say rear parking lot near or adjacent to the Smike's house to protect headlights in that direction, not all headlights in the parking lot because it could be interpreted that way later on by somebody else. I think that needs to be clear. And and the other thing is the uh, maintaining the slope, the slope there, it talks about the uh, mulch and landscaping. Yep. I don't know how many times Keith wants to replace the landscaping on that slope, whether we want to give a, a, a time period, we would do the landscaping for three, five years, he'll mulch every year, but Landscaping is a one-time deal. I, I mean, I, I think uh, it's going to be a continuing project for Keith. It, well, that now, but I, but I think some of the discussion of, of that talks maintaining the slope and mulch, and then there's another section, the slope, mulch, and landscaping. I, I think you need to be consistent when you're talking about that. Well, you know, I had mentioned to Brian, I, I, I do have concerns myself in regards to it's, it's pretty open and pretty loose in regards to it doesn't say what I'm supposed to do for plantings. It doesn't say who makes a decision, what, what plantings are acceptable and what. So I don't know if that can be tightened up at all. Well, yeah, I, I, I think it, it should. I, I think what I recall, we left it up to Melissa to decide on the plantings, right, Brian? Well, we had some, excuse me, we had some uh, meetings with her on it, well, several meetings, and I think she decided what she wanted to, to uh, look at on that slope, because otherwise it didn't matter to the town really what it looked like. Uh, but yeah, I could see that continuing is, and that's why I'm suggesting maybe a, a time period 
we maintain them for, they grow for so many years and, and that's it. And it's up to her to maintain it. Maintain the landscape. You know, you can do the slope if you want, put mulch in, that's kind of easy to do. And, and there's no big concern about that, but the, but the, the land, the vegetation that you're going to plant there is, uh, is a different story, I think. Well, my first comment about about the fence question is on the on the on the sketch plan that's referenced here. Okay, I didn't see that you didn't attach it to. Yeah, that. it wasn't sent out. Um, okay. Um, but it 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 uh, identifies where the fence is located. Okay. Um, perpendicular to the this Mike's house porch. But will will um, that be part of the legal document as well? Yeah, it's going to be attached to this. Okay. Yep. So that'll identify the fence. In terms of in terms of continuing maintenance of, of the area, I think that was Melissa's expectation was that if she's going to provide us with the right to do this in in perpetuity, that it would be an obligation that that we would continue to keep that um, keep that slope in in good whatever good order, or good maintenance, or, or or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know that she would be amenable to. And I don't even know what the time period would be, three years, five years, 20 years. I mean, we'll have the continued benefit of using her property in that way. Um, so I don't know what her response would be to that. Um, and if that's a question that the board wants me to ask. Um, I don't think I want to ask her to uh, give us this right in perpetuity if we're not willing to do the upkeep in perpetuity as well. I don't think the in perpetuity part should be should be on the table. Uh, if it's necessary to be more clear about what's expected in terms of landscaping, then maybe that's a way to go. But I, I don't think it seems, it doesn't seem fair to me to just say, okay, you're on your own now and you can't, you can't change the slope. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I have no problem with just getting clarification on expectations of of the plantings. I just don't want to have, for instance, me go in and, and plant something that we think is appropriate and have the, whether it's Melissa or an owner at a future time say, why was that planted? I don't want that planted there. Remove it and get something else in here. Yeah. Maybe we do something uh, similar as something like an MOU or something that's, you know, I, I don't know that we would attach like a planting plan to this or anything. Um, right. that, that could change over time as to what's appropriate. Maybe some less formal document or memorandum of agreement or something as to what, what the expectations are. Uh, I think that would be viewed more than this easement that's going to be recorded and probably rarely looked at. But. So what do we have to do here? Um, so <laughs> Melissa would be giving us, would be essentially donating the easement to the town. Um, so the, the board would be accepting the easement. So we'd have to make a motion to accept the easement. You ready to make a motion, Jonathan? I, I guess I'd make a motion to accept the easement with 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 a development of some MOU on, on the landscaping that is supposed to be on that slope. Wait, what did you say, Fred? I'd make a, a motion to accept the, the easement with a condition that a MOU be developed to I to discuss the landscaping to be on that slope. Yeah. So to, to clarify the expectations. Right, clarify what's expected of the landscaping on the slope. Okay, and, and with the, con when we, if we agree to accept something with a condition, Brian, um, do we need that MOU before we actually can sign off? Uh, if I think if you're comfortable that it that will take care of it, I think you can you 
can sign off. Because um, yeah, I don't I don't want signing off on the easement to be contingent on having an MOU. I would just like that to be our next step is to clarify the the landscaping. Yeah, I, I think there might be a difference. Yeah, so if you're comfortable doing it the way you suggest, that's probably a little bit more tighter. A little bit more. Okay, hold on. Which way is a little more tighter? <laughs> um, just accepting the easement and then directing myself and Keith to work with Melissa to develop a MOU on the plantings. Okay. Um, so uh, Fred's motion has a condition. I've not heard a second yet. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll withdraw the motion. Oh. Okay. Alrighty, could we have a motion to uh, accept the easement? Can I make a motion to accept the easement? And I'll second that. Um, without further discussion, um, uh, all in favor, Jonathan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Joyce, yes. Okay, and then I guess we just put another little thing on Brian's and, and Keith's plate to just clarify that, uh, that landscaping. Okay, Whew. we're getting, we're getting like part way down on the second page of this agenda, this is good. Uh, next is to discuss interior, particularly stage lighting and exterior parking lot lighting at the Waitley Town Hall. Yep, so at one of our last meetings, the last regular meeting, we had a request from the Friends of Town Hall to install um, additional lights to illuminate the stage. And I think the board agreed with the concept, but you wanted to see what the lights, um, or get an idea of what it would be and what it would look like. And um, I asked Neil to talk with Mark Boussier and get us um, an idea of what they would look like. And that's included in the, in the meeting material. Yeah. So it would be, um, it would be a track fastened to the ceiling um, near each sidewall, um, about halfway back from the stage, and then there would be these lights that would um, shine onto the stage. The problem is that the current, the existing lighting on the stage doesn't, it shines behind anybody that's standing in front of the stage. Right. Um, and this would be a donation from the Friends of Town Hall, and it would be fully paid for. Okay. So if you guys are fine, I don't know that we need a motion. I just want to know that we're fine with moving forward with it. And if not, I want to know that too. So it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I see no reason to stand in the way of this moving forward. If it sounds like they've got donations lined up, they've got an installer lined up. Um, I think there's enough overlap between the town hall, friends of the town hall and the historical commission to know whether you know, putting those in the place they're they're proposing is going to be uh, troublesome in any way. So I don't see a reason to stand in the way of this. Let's let them, let yeah, them go I, as soon as I, they I do so. Agree. As long as, uh, you know, Mark is a licensed electrician doing the work to, to do this. Yeah. Anything to add, Jonathan? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. So moving on. Exterior lights. <laughs> the exterior it's lights. Just it's just been terrible. Um, we tried to replace the, the existing light that was shining on um, Mary Lou Roop's house. Um, Eversource replaced it with a new energy efficient LED light that totally blasted the neighborhood. Um, uh -huh. the, that the, the, the following morning, I got emails from folks who told me it was horrendous. And quite honestly, it was really bright. Um, and it was horrendous. Um, so my apologies for that. Um, Eversource came in and switched it out with a smaller LED light, the smallest one that they could. Um, and I was told that it was better, but not great. Um, and I saw pictures and it was still pretty bright. Um, so my thinking in terms of next steps is... I, I wonder if, my first question is, do we need the light? 
Um, and my second question is, if we shut off the light, is it possible to use the, the I want to explore, is it possible to use the post lights that are in front of the town hall? Um, there's two, um, there's two lights, two lamps that are on post. If we could use those instead of the, the, um, the utility light. And if they're not being used at the moment, the post lights? Um, they are on a switch right now. Okay. Um, so I would, I, I think that's probably the next step. Right. And what kind of light bulbs are they? Are they incandescent or? It, what would be in there now? Yeah. In, like what, I, yeah, what's in the post right now? Is it incandescent or? Uh, energy efficiency is, uh, I mean, yeah. light can really eat up a lot of electricity. I don't really even know what's in there now. I, I think they're probably, they're, they're older fixtures for sure. Yeah. Um, so they're probably, you know, halogens at best and probably incandescent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other option is we could, we could, we could, take out the LED lights and put in the old light, the old type of light that we had. It's obviously not very efficient. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what else there is to do, but the, uh, it, it seems like a reasonable step. The other thing, we could try to put it on a timer or something, but it's still pretty bright. Um, I guess I'm missing why we need a light at all. If there's not an event going on, I, I don't get it. I, I think because the parking lot's used by um the weightly in a lot i think right well yeah but but the weightly in is sufficiently lit so that walking over that parking lot isn't dark dark i i think there's enough light i again maybe i, I don't want to sound uncaring but I, I i'm not sure that it's that it's critical well, I think it's a it's a carryover from having a light there, a requirement to have a light there, because the the ones on the post by the building haven't worked for years. So there was, I guess, a need for some lights in the parking lot. But why? Well, for safety. I mean, there was no lights otherwise in front of the building. Until so we why is it needed? If there's and, something and going on there, why is it needed? I don't know. And well, are we paying the electricity for that light, Brian? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Brian, Brian, this is to just have it on a switch and only you turn it off when you leave. So when the building's not in use, the light goes off. It's only on when the building's in use at night. It doesn't uh, work that way. I like, think that Brian put it on the table. It, it's a the light does it doesn't work that way it's it's on a photo sensor and you're only paying it it's off straight off the utility pole and if there is no meter on it it's not metered you pay pay a flat rate per day okay um, the the other other thing is i don't know if the post office requires a parking lot to be lighted certain hours and is there some agreement with the post office that there shall be a light there? Not with us. Parking? Not right. with the town. No. Apparently the answer is no, Fred. Well, I don't know. No, he, been no around the answer is no. We don't see the agreement with the post office because it's not our building and not our... Right. I've we, been around for a very long time. And there was no light there for several years, and it was put in because it was so dark, uh, people leaving the town hall at night um, back when it was town offices. It was, it was very dark. Right, and I get that. But now that it's used intermittently, and hopefully more and more, but when the building's not being used, and the building's not used after you know, 10 o'clock at night, typically, I, I, don't, I don't get it. It, it it I I don't get it. With the with the with the raised concrete sidewalk there, and it, when it's dark out at night and there's no light shining there, I would be willing to bet you're going to have people tripping and getting hurt there. The the two lamp posts that are in the front of the the walkway going in, they're not high enough in the air to shine light 
over vehicles that are parked there. So I, I mean, you could take the option, I guess, of shutting it off and seeing what the, you know, the feedback is after it's shut off, um, or just put the light that was on there back on. Do you, mm. uh, Brian, how much difference was it to pay for the old light versus the new LED light? Um, I don't, I don't think we have a good sense of what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I Sorry, I thought Keith had just said you pay you pay a flat rate per day whether you turn it on or not. Or, or did I misunderstand that? The you pay the Eversource in your monthly bill, you just get charged a flat rate for that light. I I have to pay for the one at the highway department that shines onto the highway department parking lot. Right. Is that bill. There's no too, depending on what light you put in there, it's just a flat rate. It's a it's pay. a flat rate that I pay. I'm not sure if by changing the to a different to like that LED it changed the rate. I don't know. That's why I asked Brian if he knew. I'd have to I'd have to look at the uh I'd have to look at the bill. Oof. Um I, I mean I think my preference would be if it, it, we can see what the we can see what happens with the post lights to see if that makes a difference. Um, and the post lights are definitely metered with the town hall. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Um, if the post lights are uh, really incandescent, then then that's going to be a little expensive -er, right? If it, at least if they were some kind of a, a fluorescent or uh, an LED bulb, um, the LED bulb won't be as bright as these other LED lights because uh, you can generally get those in like even as low as 60 watts uh, are, is pretty common. Um, but we, I guess we sounds like uh, collectively we don't know enough about that, uh, about the fixtures. Um, I thought I heard Fred say they don't even work. Um, but uh, Keith was saying that even if they work, the light's not going to get to where you need to for safety purposes. Well, let me ask a question to, to Keith. Uh, on the sidewalks being proposed there, mm -hmm. is there other is there other overhead lights? Lights on a poles uh, on, on Chestnut Plain? Is there other There's lights? no There's no lights that are going to be put in with the sidewalks that we will be doing, no. Right, I understand that, but is there existing lights there? At the intersection, probably there's one, isn't there? Just the, just the lights that the Waitley Inn pays for, which are traffic, which is the same light that was basically same style as what was in the parking lot, pretty much. Right, but, but if you're, I hear your concern is, is lighting for the sidewalk in front of the town hall or towards uh, the north. North office. Uh, if if that's a concern, is, is the rest of the sidewalk going to be lit, or is it good lit today anywhere along there? No, but again, there you you know the 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 sidewalks when the sidewalks get put in, there won't be any any like a raised curbing like there is right now. As you approach the the post office and the town hall, you've got that six inch lip that people could easily trip over in the dark. Right. Yeah, I, I guess to me, it kind of makes sense that we should have some lighting there for what Keith is saying could be a hazard. Plus you put in a sidewalk up the slope there on the, on the, on the north side of the parking lot, the connection to the sidewalk, it just seems that you need more light there than closer to the building. So Keith and I will keep working on it, um, but I, it, I don't know what the solution is, but it wasn't, it wasn't a great experience <laughs> for these right, right. lights that we tried. Um, yeah, the experiment of uh, having the lights turned off and trying to see if the post lights work well enough is probably an experiment that could be done with the sun staying out later and later. It's a, uh, smaller and later period of time uh, for that experiment to, to occur. Um, and uh, it's probably more vital to have that light in the darker months anyway. So we should, 
probably sort this out while there's while there's more daylight if we yeah. can. It might I mean it might be that I mean to me, I I love data. We should do the experiment. You know, and try having the light turned off and see if those post lights are uh, as bad as Keith says and may or maybe we have people with enough experience who worked in town hall under other conditions uh, who could just tell us no abandon that experiment we know what the result is but I agree um, it doesn't sound like we're going to come to any, uh, any decision on that tonight from us at least okay I had one one other question in, in relation to the lights um, does the board have any issue if um, do you want to allow Mark Boussier to do the work in light of the building closures? Say that again, Brian. Do you want to allow Mark Boussier to to install the inside lights in light of the building closures as long as they it's one person or there's two of them six working six feet apart? I think ideally it would be one person and just like the cleaning people and everyone else, they, uh, they, they sanitize everything as they leave. I think there's a safety issue with uh, electrical work that maybe you need to have another person around. Oh, well. Unless you, you ask Mark if he could do it under the, the existing conditions of COVID-19, whether he's allowed to do that kind of work or not. He would know. Yeah, I think the request came came from him whether he whether the oh. board would allow him to do it. Right, because we've closed that building basically. We've said nobody can go in. So this would be making an exception to that building closure. Uh, I, I I guess if my thinking is if he told us when he was going to do it, so we know the day it was open and somebody was in there. I guess I don't have a problem. I would rather see it that way than and say, okay, anytime next month you do it. I, I said, no, I think we need to know when. I mean, construction is seen as an essential, as an essential action. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Can we go then to the next? item, which is the uh, the terms and the dates for the 13 Town Municipal Electricity Aggregation Collaborative. Um, and I was actually on that phone call too. So I, I'm not sure I can really <laughs> summarize properly though. I can, we, I can give it a shot. Because uh, um, I have Denise's email in front of me. Um, this has been the long process of, of of trying to um, aggregate the electrical load in Waitley and 12 other towns. Um, so we've, the towns have submitted a petition to DPU um, to allow this process to go forward. Um, and the DPU has approved those petitions and is allowing the towns and the uh, the towns to move forward. Um, in terms of next steps, what needs to happen um, or, or what's planned to happen is that on April 29th, Colonial Power would like to issue an RFP to suppliers. Um, on May 13th, they would request indicative pricing due, and that, that gives you an idea of what the market would be for the different products that the towns are requesting. And then on May 20th, um, they would get what's called executable pricing, and that's when towns would have to have um, an authorized signatory um, to lock in those prices. What they're proposing to do, I believe, if I understand this correctly, is that they're looking to, I know there was some talk on the, uh, on the conference call, and it, admittedly, I don't understand all of it, but they wanted to do some, something in terms of 36 months, and they wanted it to start on August uh, 2020. Yeah. Um, so 
that's probably pretty vague information, but I think that's the, the, the general um, gist of, of what's happening. Um, I think they're asking, the RFP is going to um, ask suppliers for, um, it looks like six different products. Um, one is one is that meets renewable portfolio standards, one that's 100% national wind recs. That's the 100% green product that um, this collaboration was talking about. Then there's renewable portfolio standard plus 5% mass class one recs. Then there's 25% RPS plus 25 mass class one recs, RPS plus 50 mass class one recs, and 100% mass class one recs. Um, so I, I guess at this at this time, I guess what what we need to know is whether we're going to um, continue to move forward um, with this collaborative. Again, this is this is going to provide um, alternative. Currently, the default provider is ever, is EverSource for who's ever still with the default provider, and this would change the default the default provider, and it would give people opportunity uh, additional opportunities to purchase their electricity from from somebody other than eversource and actually if you don't opt out of what's being proposed um, you would be changed automatically but but to be clear eversource is still the wires company um, it's just that you are telling eversource to procure your energy from a third supplier yep yeah not so so it really is a seamless process to the average consumer how their electricity is delivered afterwards. The, the, the light sockets and light bulbs still work the exact same way and the refrigerator still actually goes on. Indeed. And is this just residential or is it applied commercial as well? Um, it talks to anyone on basic service. Um, I don't know. That's a question that, right. that I have to ask. So is the highway garage on basic service? No, that's a municipal though. That's not a, um, I don't know that affects our municipal rates. Yeah, Fred, this is residential. Oh, okay. Just, re just residential. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, are we at some point looking at commercial or or public buildings? I I, I think that depends upon if we get an offer or if someone starts to sniff around to see if it's a viable business model for them. But you know, our plan. You know, we're we're we've talked a lot more about going more and more towards being independent with, you know, our own solar, et cetera, down the road, than then uh, going in the, in the direction of, a, of an alternative uh, wholesale supplier. Okay. Again, that's historical. That could change obviously, but you know, we always talk about wanting to, to have more, Clean energy generated uh, by our own our own contracts, et cetera. So this is still being looked at by the Energy Committee. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so, does the Energy Committee uh, support this request here? Well, the Energy Committee has been the representative for the town on these on okay. these. Um, on these meetings and in uh, in email chains, I don't know, Joyce. Do you want to do you want to speak to that a little bit, based upon um, our yeah. primary energy committee person is, so far has has been Nat. Yeah. Um, no, we've been uh, pushing this line. It's just taken forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so when when Brian said, "Oh, there'll be you know, this will happen on the 29th and something else will happen on the 15th." I hope so. Um, 
the uh, it's just been taking a long time. And and there was on the last phone call, they mentioned if we can act in the you know the next month or two, the pricing should be advantageous for us. Right. Um, so we've been you know working on this for a long time. I don't see a reason to not move forward. We had decided to try and do this because it'll um, give some benefit to people in our town. And, they'll and either get a lower price or they'll get uh, greener energy than they have choices right now on their bill. So right. right. And I'm sorry, I, I, I cut you off. I thought you were done, Joyce. But I mean, the, 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 the point to drive home that Joyce just mentioned is the Energy Committee always said, and so have the other towns, I believe mm -hmm. 100% yeah. of the other towns have said, we will only support this if a it's greener at the same price as people are now paying. And I prefer the word cleaner, but cleaner at the same price that people are paying now or um, a same mix at a cheaper price than they're paying now. In no way are we going to support any mix that is higher in dirty fuels and in no way are we going to be a deterrent to expansion of clean energy use. Okay. But we're also not going to saddle people with a much higher bill uh, just for, just because it's a higher clean energy mix. We don't think that, we, we think that the market is mature enough that, that clean energy should be, or a cleaner mix should be, as cheap, if not a little cheaper than people are currently paying. How has the, uh, the residents been informed of this? I don't have an answer for that. I think it's gonna be a mass mailing, but I, 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 I'm not up to speed on that. But up till now, how have they been informed of this? They can attend the public meetings. There's been things in the scoop about it. Okay. So their next mailing oh, wasn't, wasn't it voted at a town meeting too? It was many years ago. It was a, bit, a long process, an extremely long process. Yeah, the, the town gave us the select board the um, authorization to move forward. So would their next uh, information be on the option to opt out? Yeah, I think I'm going to hear next when they have the the hands. Yes, but we can put information in the scoop as well. All right, but maybe on our website to, to tell people what we're doing with this. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, and again, I, it, this, this all needs to be mapped out um, beyond a conversation two, and a, two hours plus into a select board meeting. But, um, we will make it very, very apparent that, um, or we should make it very apparent that when the, there will be a mailing that comes out from the, the, the energy company that's been to colonial power, I would imagine, yeah. um, at, a, at a certain date. And we will make sure that people know that they should be looking for a mailing from colonial power and then when they get it, they shouldn't toss it out in the in, in the in the haste of tossing out all the other junk mail that we get because this is not junk mail. This is their opportunity to opt out uh, because they won't be able to opt out in the scoop. They won't be able to opt out on our website. They the the visibility and, and amplification of this mailing um, will will be their signal that they've got to pay attention to their mail. So. Should we, can we put something on our website saying they're going to get a mailing from? Yeah, we will, but we don't know when that mailing is going to be yet. So that, that oh, it's, okay. it's moot at this point. It, okay. Right. It'll likely be in mid June. I mean, the process that they've laid out is tonight. We need tonight. We need to we need to decide if if we're still gonna if we're still gonna move ahead with this group. And all that means is that um, they're gonna. Colonial Power is going to issue an RFP on April 29th to the suppliers. They're going to get indicative pricing May, May 13th. May 20th, that's the date of no return, so to speak. That's when we need to say we're in or out based on the responses to the RFP. And that's when, that's when the board's representative makes a binding decision 
as to what that's what's going to go forward. And this is a company we're going to go with. And then, so that's May 20th. Then the mailing from Colonial Power would go out mid-June, and that's the opt-out letter. Uh, but for tonight's purposes, um, they've asked for a Colonial Power has asked for a reply from the town by April 15th as to whether um, that schedule is amenable to the to the town. I, I would make a motion that we continue with this with, with this uh, process. At I this would point. second that. So is there any further discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor, John? Yep. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Okay, great. And I, I do hear and understand that there's a need that this has been an awfully long process and people are gonna need... Um, people won't remember they gave us the authority to do this. <laughs> No, it was a while ago. Okay, so we're on to new business. Um, the first item to discuss how to handle future poll hearings, uh, pending petition for Long Plain Road from Eversource. Do we want to Zoom these or not Zoom these? Can zoom it or delay it? Oh. Do you have information from them on it? Uh, yeah, we have the petition. in. We got that maybe a week, uh, maybe about a week ago, and they gave us the regular uh, butter cards, and we, um, Amy contacted them and told them that that's not sufficient because we don't meet at Fort Sandy Lane right now. So, yeah. Uh, one one thing that I would suggest that you might want to consider is they have utility company has had poles all over town that have been replaced and they don't bother to come back and do any cleanup work and remove the old poles and put the dirt back in the holes and things like that. So I would almost recommend that you don't do any more pole hearing approvals until they start to clean up some of the work that they've already started. Mm. I, I couldn't agree more with that, with that one. I, I'm, I'm incredibly frustrated that people um, do business in this town and then, and, and then leave or, 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 or dismiss it to go on to the next project. Um, it is no different than the solar installations that we've seen across town. It is, it is, it is unconscionable the way they treat this town. But is, Keith, is there more than just the two locations they're working on right oh, now? I could probably tell you at least 20 poles in town that have been started and they don't, you know, Verizon or whoever doesn't come back to, to finish things up. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I, I can drive around and make, I could make a list of every location that has had a poll hearing where a new poll has been put in and the old one has not been fully removed. I could, I could mm -hmm. easily compile a list and get that to you. That would be good to have. I would think. I can do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, maybe we can we can have a hiatus on poll hearings and um, and if they are really chomping at the bit to get poll hearings, Brian will have something to tell them um, about some of their other polls that we approved that didn't get cleaned up properly. Was that? Uh, or, or, or I, I get the feeling though when Brian first proposed this that it was more like a, hey, we're not in person, we're in Zoom. Can we actually have poll hearings? That it wasn't so much that they messed up these other polls issue. Well, yeah, there's. I think there's two issues. Keith and I have. Keith has talked to me about that a little bit. Um, the one that they're, the one that they're petitioning now, um, is the one along Plain Road. Um, mm -hmm. That that we've seen multiple iterations of. Um, that's by the by the dump mm -hmm. or the old town dump. Um, I think they've come to an agreement with a Butters, um, and it's. I think this is one of the reasons why the solar f 
uh, the COCOT solar installation is not online. Um, so we balance that against the leverage that it gives us to get some other, some other things cleaned up. Um, I'm not sure really how to balance that. Hmm. Yeah, I am a little mad about Christian Lane, but yeah, uh, suggestions about how we could get them to address the sites that Keith is willing to inventory for us. I guess it depends on it's pro it's likely a probably a Verizon likely a Verizon issue. Uh huh. Uh, Verizon's in town, but Verizon I don't know. Owns the polls and. Um, I'd be interested to see the list though. And is it that they're waiting for one another or they just haven't taken in, mo in most cases, it's a scenario where Verizon comes in and sets the poll, Eversource comes in and does their work, and then you have to wait for Comcast to switch theirs and then um, Verizon to come back and switch theirs again, and then finally pull the old poll out. So there is, you know, the, the three utilities that are involved and it does take a little bit of time, but it, I, I've been at this long enough and I remember years ago where we had to sort of do the same thing. And then when you tell them, well, you're not getting any new poll hearings until the old stuff's taken care of, then things happen pretty quick. Hmm. So when you give us this list, you will look at the old polls to make sure everything is removed and yeah, I mean, once the, once they've removed everything, Fred, then they pull the pole out and they just backfill the hole and it's fine and dandy. But a lot of cases around town, if you drive around yourself, you'll see where the work has started and now there's two poles in the ground because they haven't finished transferring the wires and they just leave it that way. Right, yeah. I know. I understand. I see that, yeah. But I don't look up at the pole all the time to see if the, the wires have been moved over or not. All right. So it sounds like there's a a process that's not somewhere along the line is getting delayed because somebody's not, <coughs> excuse me, somebody's not moving their wires. And um, you're saying use this as some leverage to get those, um, those other wires moved. Maybe they're Comcast wires at this point. Maybe they're Verizon. Maybe they're um, maybe they're ever source, uh, but you've in if we do that, we're sort of holding hostage to some extent the solar connection for one of the projects <coughs> that we have going <coughs> in town. <coughs> Sorry, let me take my glass of water here. So, Keith, can you send the board what you have? the slightest petition so we can see what it is. And yeah, I, I will prepare before your next meeting. I'll prepare a list and get that to Brian. Well, I mean, uh, I'm into, uh, I'm in Brian, I, I guess. Brian, could you send us the, the latest petition here so we could see what it is and decide whether we want it on the agenda for next meeting or not? Yeah, um, we'll have to put out, if, if we're going to hold it, we do have, public notice requirements that we need to meet if we're going to have a public hearing on April 29th. So we'll have to decide within the next week, but I. Okay. Well, give us a, a response date and we'll, we'll see. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. I'm not opposed to holding a poll hearing. Yeah. Um, and especially if we can somehow get both the infrastructure we need moving forward and getting those other polls taken care of. But it might be something we need to bring to somebody's attention and I don't know whose attention to bring it to. Okay. All right, are we ready to move on? Can I just complain about one thing? Yes. Um, of course. So, <laughs> as we go on to 815 here. So I haven't seen it myself because I keep forgetting to drive by, but I'm told that that Christian Lane regulators were put in on single poles that um, instead of the instead of the platform that was previously discussed. Oh, yes. and um, would have been nice. To know that, it's not a new poll, so they don't need a a poll permit. They're replacement poles. I guess they're they're taller, uh, but it would have been nice if there was communication to us that 
Okay. They were not going to go forward with the petition and that they were going to do this before they actually did the work. But okay. that, that's my complaint for 815. Okay. It's, it's the fact, you know, that, I, that we have to figure it out because they're actually putting them in is not right. Yep. So. Okay. Well, we have a whole list of complaints for them, don't we? Yeah. Okay. All right. So can we move on to our last item of new business, which is to discuss and vote to approve the issuance of a note for $200,000 to East Hampton Savings Bank at 1.15% to refinance the town hall historic rehabilitation project debt. And I take it this is a, what our plan was all along was to basically do a series of one year notes, you know, refinancing each year as you go to get a better interest rate or better other terms. Um, is there any reason, is there any downside uh, to approving this? Actually, 1.15% with that rate, there's no downside. <laughs> there's no downside. I, I think it's a great rate, right? It is a great rate. Um, so so uh, I would so, uh, hear a motion on that. What's the term of this? Just one year? This is a one year. We're doing one year um, because the Community Preservation Act um, wants the ability to be able to pay down Right. Um, the note this way they can do that that's why we had the special town meeting where they appropriated additional money right. um, so doing one year notes works better for that purpose if I did regular like state house notes for the for a 10 year term or whatever you can't pay those down so the, they would so the town would have to pay the 200,000 by the end of the year yes you take out another note. So what what will happen is I ha, I am having a check done up for um, two hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars to pay off last year's note. This note will replace a portion of that as the two hundred thousand of it, and then the sixty seven thousand is what the CPA appropriated last year to pay down the note. Okay. Um, so what I have all the paperwork um, all ready to go. So if you folks approve this, I can put it somewhere at the town offices so that you could come in and sign it. It does need to be signed re relatively quickly because the, the, um, note that I'm paying off is being paid off on the 17th. So this money should be available on the 16th. Okay. So um, you signing off so I can get it off to um, the places that it needs to go off to a multiple in time. Yeah. Uh, it, it in time is important. So I could put it in one of your mailboxes maybe um, yep. okay. and I'll then you can just to, to accept the terms. I will second that. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, John? Yep. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep. Um, great. Go up to town administrator updates. So, so how do we want to, how do, how do you guys want to sign that? Cause the other document that needs to be signed by, at least two out of the three is the acceptance of the easement. All the other contracts and stuff that need to be signed, it can be signed by, by the chairperson. So Joyce, I'll have like seven things for you to sign, probably plus the warrants. We'll do it at once okay. next week. That's okay. That's um, but in terms of signing the note and the easement, if we could put those together, um, when I can send that to you, um, okay. and we'll need at least two out of three to sign, how do we want to, where do we want to leave that for everybody? I can come in late tomorrow afternoon if it'll be ready or I can come in on Friday. It will, I, I'll drop it off in the morning and put it in, put it wherever you want me to put it. <laughs> well, who's going to get there first? 
Well, um, none, I'm not in on Thursdays normally. I would be in on Friday, but... Um, why don't you just come in on... Why don't you just bring it in on Friday and then I'll come in on Friday morning? We could do that. And that'll give me time to get you the easement document if you wouldn't mind printing that out. Okay. And he can sign... And they can sign both. Okay. okay. Sounds so good. come in and sign things when Lynn's on duty there. And you're there for the morning... I'm there um, because it's my only day working there. I'm there oh. from eight to oh. four, probably, or eight to three anyways. Oh, okay. All right. I can certainly make that. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds good then. All right. So, town administrator. I'll, I'll make it quick for once. Um, you guys, uh, the board received the center school committee final report. Um, yep. so we'll, I assume we want to pick that up once things settle down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Haydenville Road project so far, um, we've had success keeping it on the tip for the transportation improvement plan for 2025. Uh, myself, Keith and Fred have attended one in-person meeting and one virtual meeting and hopefully that the project stays there. I suspect it will. Um, they're going to approve those at the end of April. Uh, my understanding. Right. Can yeah. I ask, uh, Anna, I don't mean to interrupt you, is there still the meeting on the 17th to talk about that? Um, I need to follow up with Natalie Blay on that. I'm not positive. Oh, that was, person meeting is certainly not happening. No, but was that was with her or was that with Mass DOT as well? It was with her, with uh, FERCOG, PVPC, Williamsburg. Okay. It was everybody. Okay. In Northampton, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a good reminder. I'll follow up on that. Okay, we can move that to the phone, uh, phone or not. Um, and then the conservation assistance for small communities grant. This has been a headache. Um, Jonathan knows about it. Um, so we were awarded the funds, but it doesn't seem like um, we're going to be able to use them um, this fiscal year. Um, which would have been nice to know before. Um, Does that mean we get to use them next fiscal year? It, uh, that's, that's the million dollar question, Joyce. Hmm. It, it, yeah, we'll have to reapply. Um, it, it's probably better to explain an email, but the, the way that it would work out is we would have to submit one of the, one of the conditions of us taking the funds is that, is that we apply for, another grant we call it a park or a land grant we submit an eligible application for one of those and then they'll reimburse us but those grant applications require which are due july 15th require um at least a, a draft and public commented open space and recreation plan which they're giving us the funds to start on july 1st oh so unless we can turn it around in 14 days which we can't then we can't use the funds so what we need to do is we need to hopefully appropriate the CPA funds um, for this year. Well, at this town meeting, whenever we have it, start work on the plan in like December, apply for this in December, and then we'll have, we'll have already started the plan so we can have it all mm -hmm. set by the time we need to apply in July. It would have been sweet. nice to either know that or me to figure it out before all this, but yeah. I, it's, it's been a, the other option in, in who knows what's going to happen with the community compact program um, this coming year. That's another option is that that's eligible for community compact funds, which really have no strings attached. So and I think we'd be eligible to apply. So that might be a better source of funding for this. But um, I said it wasn't going to take long, but I've taken long. So. No. Okay. All right, are there any items not anticipated? Okay, hearing none, I, I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes.